Hey guys, welcome to this video where I'll be talking about the new Google open model. I will also be showing you how you can use it um, within a RAG system, just leveraging Hugging Face as well. So I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to get straight into it. But for those of you who want to just maybe click on the article and just read, you can go over here. This video is in article format and it's going to be in the link in the comments and in the description as well. Basically within seven steps, I show you how you can leverage Gemma and Hugging Face um, open source model and MongoDB as your vector database to build a RAG system. And I'll be showing you the step-by-step -step process in this video as well. Well, also there is also a GitHub repository where you can download the notebook I'll be presenting here. It's in this repository and don't forget to start and watch the repository because I'll be uploading, I'll be updating it um, regularly. So we can get started and let's go over to the news. This was yesterday, Google released its models and Gemma are open models. Specifically, they released two versions of it, two variants, actually four variants of it. We have the, we have Gemma with 2 billion parameters and the other with 7 billion parameters. And we can get the instruction version of the models as well. And you can access the model directly from hugging phase, which is quite cool. And we're going to be leveraging hugging phase to get the instruction version of the model, um, into our development environment and use it within our rag pipeline as the base model. So going to go straight into the code. So what we're going to be building today, we're going to be building a very simple rag system that is going to be acting as a movie recommender. We're going to use MongoDB as the vector database and as the operational database. We're also going to be using um, Hugging Face to access models, um, open source models. We're going to be using the GTE large embedding model. We're also going to be using the Gemma 2B instruction model as well. And this is essentially going to be our We're going to be starting with installing a few libraries. Um, data sets to get the data set we're going to be using for this, uh, for this demo and pandas to convert the data set into data frames and conduct some data structure manipulation and process it. Then PyMongo to establish a connection to our database and access our collection. And we could, um, conduct some database operations using PyMongo. Then sentence transformer is a hogging face library that will give us access to the GTE embedded model, then we'll also be using transformers to access the Gemma model specifically. And one thing to know, if, if you're having problem with the Gemma mod models, one of the solution to some of the issues that have been happening is just to upgrade the version of the, of the transformer library you have on your machine. I will also be using a GPU. I'm using a A100 and it's got a high RAM and, um, I'll be using the hogging face accelerate which just allows you to run the models and conduct inference using the hardware accelerator on your machine. So as usual, we're going to start with loading our data set into our development environment. Um, so we're going to be using the embedding movies data set, which you can access on, at this link. This is a data set with a bunch of movie records that contains the genre, contains the director, and most importantly, contains the full plot of the movie as well. One thing to note is that with this data set, we already have an embedding. So this data set does come with some embeddings as well. This was generated using OpenAI ADAR002 embedding model. So this is, if you don't want to spend any, any time or money on creating your own embedding, you could just use this data set to conduct some experimental, um, experimental pipelines you want to build. But we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be creating new embeddings using the full plot. Um, and in this line here, I'm going to be dropping any empty, um, any empty movie records without any full plots. I'm also going to be dropping the plot embedding columns because we're not going to use that. We're going to generate a new column, which means we're going to have every data, every data point within our data set is going to have some new embedding. So this is. One of the key part here, we're going to be using the census transformer, um, module using the constructor to access the GPTE, the, the GTE large embedded models. So, um, 
you can access a bunch of Hugging uh, embedding models from Hugging Face. So just to quickly show you, um, this is a leaderboard of the embedding models, but I'm interested in the retrieval ranking. And we can see here we have, yeah, we can see here we have the GTE large ranked at number 19, which is not too bad at all for an open source model. Um, and I think we have the open AI models rank, ranked at six. So ranked at six. So yeah, which is not too bad as well. So 55.44 on average. And with the GTE large, we have 52.22. There are other variants of the GTE models. And the GTE models are embedded models um, which were trained on English text and created by a research group over at Alibaba. So you can access those embedding models as well and the variants on Hugging Face. If you go back to the code, what I'm doing in this line is just loading the embedding model and I'm creating a function that takes in uh, an input text and I'm checking if it's empty and if it's not empty, then we can encode the model and get um, the numerical representation of the model assigned to the variable embedding. Then we convert it into a, a Python list because I think this comes as a NumPy array. Next, we're going to call this, um, apply this function, the get embedding function with the find, with the find up here to every single data point within the data, data set. More specifically, we're going to pass the full plot, which contains the, the text that we're going to be generating embedding from. So when, when this process is done, this should take a few, um, a few minutes or so. When this process is done, what we're going to have is some new embedding. Um, a new embedding column and different embeddings for all the data points. Next, we can connect to our MongoDB database. And I could quickly show you what you can do here. Within this step, you actually need to have a MongoDB database set up and your collection set up. And the steps to achieve this are very straightforward. So we can start. We're going over to MongoDB. Let's increase this. So once you sign into MongoDB, just register um, with a free with a free account. Um, you just create. You click the create button, and that will allow you to create a new cluster. You can create a shared um, a free shared cluster, which gives you the ability to create a database without having to pay for it. Um, or if you want, you can create a dedicated cluster as well. But free is going to be enough for this tutorial. Um, and you can change all the settings of your, of your free cluster as well. If you do want more storage, you can just go up, up a level on the tier and you can, um, increase your storage capacity for your data for your cluster and no additional settings needed. And you can just click create your cluster. I'm not going to be doing that. I created, created mine. And once you get into your cluster, um, you can browse your collection and what you're going to, what you want to do is create your new database. And in this case, we're going to call our one movies and we're going to call, um, the collection movies collection. I think, I believe I called it movies collection too, but you can give it whatever name you want. But once that's done, you're going to be able to come into, you see the created database here and in here, you can see your movies collection too. I've already gone through the steps. So my data, my collection is already populated with some data. Um, but this is an important step here. We need to create our, our vector search index because what we're doing is we're going to be conducting a semantic search that's going to use some embeddings to basically get similar embeddings within our, from records within our database. So to create a vector search index, you just create, you just click the button create search index and then you create an Atlas vector search index with the JSON editor. And we're going to, we're going to name our index, just stick to the name. I'm going to stick with vector index here. Uh, but one thing you have to do is definitely assign it to your desired collection. And the type is going to be vector and the path. Remember, it's going to be embedding. This corresponds to the path that the embedding is stored within the, the records, within the documents in our database. And the number of dimensions for this case is going to be 1024. Um, 
With the GTE large embedding model, the dimensions it creates the embedding in is 1024. And I believe the GTE base, it's, it's uh, 784 and the GTE small is around 300. So if you have limited um, database storage capacity, you can always go for the smaller embedding model to, to, to create your embedding vectors. And the similarity function we're going to be using is call sign. So once this is done, you can click next, but it's not going to let me because I've already done the step before. This will be green once all the fuels are completed and you can click next and that will basically take you to, to where your vector index has been created and is active. So those, that's very quickly that you can create a, a database using MongoDB, create your collection and create your vector search index. So let's go back to the code. So here, here is going to make more sense. So now we're going to make a, we're going to actually connect to our, Mongo, to our MongoDB database. From your MongoDB database, you can get a connection URI, which you're going to place within, um, which you're actually going to place within your environment variables within your development area. So I'm using the Google Collab secrets and within the secrets, I have a key called Mongo URI and the value is my connection string which you can get from MongoDB Atlas instance. We're going to get our Mongo URI from the secrets. Then if we don't have a Mongo URI in the environment variables, we're just going to have a print statement. Once we have our Mongo URI, we're going to call that function we defined up here, which creates a PyMongo Mongo client, which is essentially user connection to our database. And with this, we have a connection to our database within this object, uh, Mongo client. And we can access the database by name and we can also access it by the, by the collection that we actually named, that we named earlier. So this object is a reference to our collection and we have a successful connection. And one thing I like to do is I just need, I just like to clean out the collection because do you have some records there? Because I've ran this several times. So I'll just clean out the records and make sure I'm starting with an empty collection. Next, we are going to convert the, the data set that we have earlier. We're going to convert it into a list of dictionary where each, each data row in that data frame is going to be a, a single record. So we're going to convert that and assign it to a variable called documents and then insert that in batch into the collection using the insert many method available from the database client we created. Earlier. The ingestion is complete. This takes a few seconds. It's very quick. We can get to, to the actual vector search, semantic search functionality that we're trying to, to build here. We have a function called vector search, and this function takes in a user query, which would be wherever input comes in from the user and the collection. This user query is going to be, um, is going to be converted to an embedding. So we're going to use the same function we used earlier to generate the embeddings for our data set. We're going to use that for the user query the, that we receive. So we assign it to this variable query embedding. So we're going to define a pipeline that has two stages. The first stage conducts the vector search. The second stage actually projects out um, any information we want, and then we can exclude and include some information. So the first stage is a vector search, um, is where the vector search actually happens using that query embedding that we have up here. And then we're going to be we're going to be defining the path of where the embeddings for each of the record is located, which is in the embedding field. We're going to consider 150, um, 150 embeddings, but we're only going to limit the result to four to be returned by the database. And once we have that, once this stage is completed, we can then project out the fuse we don't want. We don't want the ID field. You can also project out the embedding field just to reduce the amount of, of, of um, data returned from from the database if you're not using the embedding for anything else in, in downstream processes. We also have a vector search score just to see the similarity score returned from the database as well. What we're going to do is execute this, this pipeline that we've defined up here using the aggregate call. And what this does is it executes multiple stages in, within a pipeline. And then we convert our results into a list and we return that.
Another function we're going to be defining is the get search result. So this is going to be using that vector search query, which is earlier. We're going to pass in the query from the user and pass in the collection we want to get the, we want to conduct the vector search on. So we're going to create an empty string called search result. And this line here just formats what is returned from the vector search. I only want to get the title and the full plot from from the actual results and this is where tools like Py pydantic would be useful actually I, I would i might do a tutorial on that as well um just to show how you can use pydantic to handle like data validation within rag systems um but anyway let's get back to to this particular rag system so in the next line we have the key query what is the best romantic movie to watch and why I don't know why I chose this query, maybe because it's February, Valentine's just went. So yeah, I don't know why, but um, we're going to be using this query to get some uh, movie recommendation from our records. We're going to be using that get search results, and this is going to get us additional context with the query. One thing I do do is I create another sort of string of the query and the source information combined, and this is what I'm going to put to Gemma. So just for the print statement, just showing the print statement of, of our query, which is uh, what is the best romantic movie and why. And we're going to be using these as these were the, uh, the, the returned records from our vector search. And we're going to be using this. I'm going to tell in Gemma to recommend um, one of these movies. So to access Gemma is with login face, it's very, very simple. In, in less than two lines, you have access to one of the most powerful open models out there. So we're going to be using the auto, auto tokenizer from, from Hugging Face. And we're also going to be using the auto model for casual LLM from Hugging Face to access, um, to access Gemma's functionality. And one thing I am doing here is I'm going to be using, um, I'm going to be using the GPU as well. So you, if you're using the GPU, you have to, you have to specify this argument device map auto. If not, then you can uncomment this line here and comment this line. But this gives us access to the tokenizer um, for Gemma, which converts text into a sequence of numerical um, of of numerical values, um, which we can we can also decode them as well. So. Using the tokenizer, we're going to pass in that query plus the search results. And we're actually going to, and this returns a tensor. We're going to put this tensor into the GPU and we're going to use the GPU on this Google Colab environment. Then very simple, we're just going to call model.generate and unpack the input, the tensor object. And this, we're going to set the max new tokens to 500. Um, and this essentially we allow Gemma to generate um, a decent amount of uh, response to the query that we're given. And very simple, we have the response in this variable. Uh, model generate will, will return a response. Using a GPU, it, it's relatively quickly. If you're using a CPU, it might take a bit of time, maybe uh, a minute or so. Um, but once you get your response, you can decode that using the tokenizer and see what the text representation of that, of your response is. And for me, um, we can, we can see what we have there is the, the response is, uh, based on the search result, it selected shut up and kiss me. I've never watched that before. Probably never will, but that is a, a very simple step on how to use Gemma within your RAG system using, um, hogging face to access the model and MongoDB as your vector database. There is more things we can cover, such as re-ranking, um, what chunking strategy can we use? And I mentioned using Pydantic for some data validation as well. Um, so there's a lot going on in this space and um, I'm, I'm gonna be here to try and keep up with it and create these videos and articles and, and code as quickly as I can for you guys. So um, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Oh wait. Don't forget to subscribe, like and subscribe as well.